So you want to learn how to be an investor, which is a great step in your life and in your financial life because taking this step is huge and will then open up a bunch of doors of opportunity and freedom for you. But this is very important and this video is very important before you even start this journey because there's a checklist you should go through before beginning the journey of being an investor. And the reason why you want to go through this checklist and do these steps is because 90% of all investors fail and lose money. I don't want you to be part of that 90%. I want you to be part of that 10%. And then within that 10%, I want you to be in that 1% on your return rate. It is very possible and it's very doable. Now, let's get looking at what step number one is. So the first thing I want you to do is to go out right now and buy a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. This book is very important. I want you to read this book, even read it two or three times because the lessons in it can be easily missed. And it's very important to read this book. The point of this book is to create a mentality within yourself on how to be successful and how to be rich and how to be wealthy and how to have money. Too many people, we are taught really how to be poor and how to be average, how to be normal. And that's the issue. We constantly feel like our lives have to be in debt. We constantly feel like we have to be at work. We constantly feel like we have to be under pressure the entire time. And this is not true. Robert explains something called the rat race and almost all of us get stuck in it in our lives. Do not become part of the rat race. Or if you're in it, escape it. Because it is possible to escape, but it becomes harder and harder and harder the more you think like an average or normal person. I need you to read this book so you get the proper mentality because having this mentality will help you succeed farther, will help you succeed faster, and will help you achieve more in this trip of being an investor. And will also help with this checklist because this checklist is not super easy to do. And having this mentality will keep you on the straight and narrow and will keep you pounding away at it. So now we're going to head to number two. Now this step is huge and critically important because if you have debt, it's going to weigh down on your finances, it's going to weigh you down, it's going to get in the way, it's going to cloud your judgment, and it's going to make you too emotional about money, which is not good. The less emotion you have with money, the more it becomes a tool. So I suggest paying off as much debt as possible. Now I'm not saying to be like Dave Ramsey and go out there and pay everything off before you start this. That's not the case. But definitely get rid of as much as you can. Definitely check out Dave Ramsey if you struggle at paying debt and you really want to learn how to pay debt off. Check out the Total Money Makeover book. But if you just got some debt out there, take it, care of it. You know, get rid of your credit card debt. If you got a car loan, try to get rid of it. There's this effect called the snowball effect, and you should use that to pay off your debt. It's a technique used to pay off debt. But in either way you can, pay off that debt, but do not adjust your lifestyle based on what you've paid off. Live the same way and take that money that you saved because you paid off that debt, so that extra income coming in, and I want you to use that to invest. That is going to be some critical money that we're going to put away so we can start this journey. But this one might take a while and that's okay. If it takes you a month to do it, great. If it takes you a year to do it, that's okay. But it's very important because debt makes you very emotional about money and debt is what makes money so important to us in a way. Just because if we're not paying off our debt, we're gonna get a bunch of legal trouble and we're gonna start losing things and we're essentially gonna start losing our lives when we already have because we're already handcuffed due to this debt. All right, so now on to number three. So number three is one that I wish I would have done more when I started out investing. And that's because paper trading allows you to learn the ins and outs of stock trading and the ins and outs of the stock market without actually any real risk. Me, when I was 19 years old and I started this journey, I went right in with about two grand worth of cash. And you know, I ended up losing some, I made some, lost some, did some dumb trades, lost decent amount of money in the beginning. And I was like, oh, this sucks, this hurts. But I kept persevering luckily to get where I am today. But 
being a paper trader is um, you simply just have a notebook and I use Yahoo Finance and I recommend just using Yahoo Finance. You go and you find stocks you like doing some research here and there. And what you do is you write down what the stock is, what you bought it at, the date you bought it at, the time you bought it at, why you bought it, and then you watch it and you sort of dictate when you want to sell it. And then when you want to sell it, you say, I sold this many shares at this price, this was my profit, this was my loss, this was the date, this was the time, this was my earnings, this was my return. I usually recommend when you're doing paper trading, using the amount of money that you're actually going to start with. So if you're going to start with 10 grand, do 10 grand worth of paper trading so you know how to handle that much money. If you only got 2 grand, just do about 2 grand. It's okay to do a little more, a little less to get like the proper number of stocks to make math easier on you for a certain one you found. But start relatively with the amount of money that you have that you are going to start with when you begin using actual money. It will make the correlation a lot more real and a lot more lifelike. It will really drive home the point of paper trading. And you can start this right after you read Robert Kiyosaki's book. And you can be doing this while you're doing all your debt payments. And um, so while you're paying everything off and you're learning, you can be doing this paper trading for whatever, the 6 to 12 months you're paying off your debt, whatever it ends up being. So you should be well adversed with the stock market and how the trading works if you do this paper trade. I have a whole video on how to paper trade and what to look for and how to set things up. But just in this checklist, that's what you want to do um, because it just creates this lifelike feel before actually doing the real thing. All right, so now on to step four for you guys. So step four is where things start to get really real. And that is because what you're doing is you're going to collect a pool of money called an emergency fund. This emergency fund is going to be within a bank. Usually I would do it inside of a checking account or a savings account. Just because I just personally just don't like savings account. Because having a savings account might make you want to save more than what you really need here. And you're going to take three months worth of expenses, three months worth of bills, and put it in that account before you start. And the reason behind this is if that money in the stock market were to crash, you still have three months worth of bills saved up so you can catch yourself. It's going to hurt if you're to lose that money, but this emergency fund is there. Or if suddenly your car needs to be repaired, do you blew out a tire or whatever, that money is there. That safety net is there. If you lost your job, that safety net is there. Even if you weren't going to invest, I highly recommend having an emergency fund. I think it's so stupid when people are like, oh, I only have 10 bucks in my bank account. Like, what are you doing? It's going to hurt you. If something were to happen, what are you going to do? Put on a credit card and get charged at 20% interest instead of what you could just pay for cash with zero interest? So having this emergency fund is just a good life tip in general. But very important when it comes to investing because we're going to do high volatility stuff that can result in wins and it should result in wins and us making money. But there's definitely a losing side and a loss can occur and it probably will occur on your journey. To say you'll never lose is a lie. So you want to make sure you always have enough money and are not solely relying on your investment to survive at this point in time. Later on that becomes different because there's sort of a passive nature of your investments due to how much they've grown. Over now in the beginning, when things are gonna be very active and very small, gains are gonna be made with significant money to yourself. All right, now we're gonna go into step five. I think this is very important, having your physical and mental health in check. Because if you do not have those two things, investing is going to be extremely difficult for you and it's going to be damaging to you because investing is a very high stress game at times and it can become very emotional and very heavy on oneself there's a lot of people who slip into depressions because of investing i'm not saying this to scare you i'm saying this as a warning almost it's not that it does happen i never had this happen to me even during bad days I have days where I've lost over a thousand dollars in a couple hours but because I had my health in check and I was not emotionally attached and I learned how to be strong mentally it let me see through what was actually happening in the market and it let me find other opportunities where at the end of that month I found so many different opportunities after that loss 
that I came out making a couple grand that month just due to the fact that I did not become depressed, I did not become destroyed by the one mistake. That Because it will happen and it does happen. So that's why mental strength and mental health is crucial in this game and in this business. Physical health is just the same thing there. Being healthy is just incredibly important just in day to day life. But being healthy physically also translates to mental health. If you're healthy physical, usually healthy mental for the most part. Obviously there's issues here and there and sort of diagnosis, but being healthy physically allows you to think a lot cleaner and a lot better. So I definitely highly recommend you have both in check. Not one or the other, both. All right, on to the next one, guys. All right, now the moment of truth for you to finally start your journey as an investor. Now, I get asked this question a lot. I have $500, can I invest? My instant answer, no. No, you can't. I usually recommend you have at least $2,000. I don't even like $2,000. The more, the merrier, the better. Because you gotta think, it's a game of percentages. And that is the critical part. It's a game of percentages. Well, the average stock, let's say, let's say the average return is 12% a year, which it usually is in a mutual fund. 12%, all right. Well, if you have a hundred grand, that's twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars is significant to people, and I mean, it's pretty much to anyone unless you're in the millionaire range. But and that's a, that's a year, so it's about a thousand bucks a month. Well, if you only have a thousand dollars, that's only one hundred and twenty bucks. And usually, if you're only investing with a thousand dollars, that's your only thousand dollars. There's a reason why the guy with a hundred thousand is investing it because he's probably got another couple hundred thousand dollars in real estate or some other asset and um, having two thousand dollars at least can offset that percentage difference sort of so you that you at least see some sort of return because you gotta remember there's also commissions built into this and when you're investing with such little money those commissions just eat up your percentages the commission just eats up your money and it's not even a lot it's 10 bucks to go round trip, five bucks to buy, five bucks to sell a stock. And when you're only making a hundred bucks, that's 10% you're losing just off a of commission. That's significant, that's huge. Well, when you have a lot more money, when you're making 10 grand, 100 grand, you're talking fractions of a percent with commission. Commission is practically negligible, and sometimes Fidelity won't even charge you commission if you have so much money. But that won't be till like a way later date to that point. Until we're, I guess we're both at that point. But it's just important. Have at least $2,000 expendable cash. When you put that money into an uh, uh, E-Trade, Scott Trade, Fidelity, whatever it is. Whenever you put it into that account, I want you to imagine you threw that money into a fire pit. That's how you got to be mentally. And that's what, how it needs to feel. Because if you do not feel like you're throwing money into a fire pit, you become too emotional about it. That money you put in there is gone. It does not exist anymore in your life. And when you think that way and you have that mentality, that's when you'll succeed with this. When that money is too much of a lifeline for you, when that money is too emotional, when that money is what you think is just like, oh, I wasted my life if I lose this. I wasted how many hours of work or whatever it is if I lose this. If you think about that, you'll be too jumpy and you'll make poor decisions. You essentially follow the herd instead of being the shepherd in which will kill you in the stock market and that's the reason 90% of people fail. They follow the herd because they're too emotional. They have that lifeline hooked up and it's not good. So that's why you need to have that fire pit mentality. It's gone. It's vanished. It don't exist no more. It's business time. It's game time. We're going to get after it. You can start using that money and touch that money and when the return is great enough we are really not pulling against your hardcore balance when you're pulling off it you're really pulling against interest and that's at a lot later date so in the beginning this money has vanished this money doesn't exist so you guys ready to start because i am just one final thought before i let you guys go and before you start working on this checklist and going buying the rich dad poor dad book um, it's that you need to understand where you are in your life. And if you're not at that point in your life where investing is too detrimental and scary and you can't get rid of that money, just don't. Just focus on your debt. 
Investing is sort of like the last frontier, essentially, in the financial world. And the one that becomes before that is debt payment. And so definitely get rid of your student loans, get rid of your car payments, get rid of your credit card payments, and you know, focus on your mortgage. I'm not gonna say that go hammer out your mortgage in two years. That's just unrealistic and you'll be living on ramen and mac and cheese that whole two years and have no life with the you're living with all the breakers off in your house so you don't use any electricity. Um, but you just want to understand that investment isn't critical, but it is needed. You need to invest in some, world, some way to be successful. I'm going to be honest. It's going to take it. You know, some people, it's okay to do a 401k. And if that's what you're satisfied with after seeing this, that you feel safer using your 401k, that's okay. Just make sure you're maxing out that match if you're doing that, you know. But if you're ready to go into this investing, just definitely take care of the little loose ends you have to before starting just because it lets you focus. This is a business. That's what you have to treat this as. This is now your business. This is Anthony Incorporated. This is Susan Incorporated. This is Josh Incorporated. This is whoever Incorporated now when you do this. You are the CEO and you are the janitor. So you make all decisions and you have to clean up all the messes. And that's what it's got to be like. This has to be a business. If you do not treat it like a business, you will fail. Because those who treat this like a hobby or a game or it's just some sort of free money making machine, you're going to get burned. You might not initially, but in the long run, you're going to get burned. Because you're not following the proper discipline steps on how to do this properly. Now, like I guess I don't want to strike any fear into you guys, and I really want you to invest because of how important it is. But it's better to not do it if you're not prepared or you're not comfortable with it than to force yourself to do it and fail at it and end up in a crucial spot in your life where Anthony told me I should invest because I had a little bit of money and no debt, and he said I could make my life completely different. And it's completely different. I'm homeless. I'm jobless. Yeah, I don't want that. No, I don't want no one wants that. But you gotta just see where you're at in your life before starting all this. If you don't do anything, at least do steps one and two because it'll at least get you in the right mentality, it'll get you the right spot in your life too. You can really make a difference. Even if you just focus on income, if you have no debt and you're still making your full income and just paying your taxes, you'll see a massive change in what you can afford in your life and how your bank account looks. Well, that's it for today's video guys. Next time we'll dig deeper into stocks and things of that nature and how they're traded and what to look for when sort of researchers in and that's going to explain some more topics and terms when it comes to the stock market and make it a little bit easier for you guys to understand just because there is a lot of char uh, terminology and jargon within the sector. Alright, peace out guys.